Hello, Snackers. This is Kareem Iskander. I'm a lead technical advocate with Cisco Learning and Certifications. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt Tanapoli. I'm the head of developer strategy and product management with Cisco Developer Relations. Welcome to episode 116 of Snack Minute. Snack Minute is your weekly 10-minute bite of learning, coding, and just some cool stuff we think you might like to know. And the cool thing we're going to talk to you about is mentorship with my colleague and our returning guest, Hank, who everybody knows. Uh, Hank, do you mind introducing yourself, please? Sure. Uh, I'm Hank. Hank, who everybody knows Preston. Kareem just gave me a new middle name, which is always fun. Uh, so I'm a principal engineer here in learning and certifications. And I, uh, you know, I, my day job really is just happens to be whatever uh, problem happens to be need to be filled that week. Uh, changes on a daily basis sometimes. So Sounds exciting, Hank. Something that's been growing of interest to me over the last, I would say, couple of years, and then also something that I've been hearing more and more about from the community of network engineers that are out there, and it came up recently at a CCIE meeting that we had at Cisco Live in Vegas in June, um, is this idea of of the role of an engineer to help mentor the next generation of engineers. Because at some point, we need people to replace us, right? Uh, I don't want to be configuring switches when I'm 95. There's far better things that I'd rather be doing. I teach CCNA at Netacad, at a Netacad Academy. And that is one of the things that was really interesting for me as a way to kind of go back to my roots as a network engineer, help teach people the fundamentals, Show, show the excitement of really kind of getting into IT and infrastructure. Um, and I would say one of the other things that I've learned, I learned many, many years ago, is that you can understand a piece of technology, but you, you understand it at a completely different level if you are trying to teach it and explain it to somebody else. So even in those cases where we're mentoring another engineer, right, we're polishing our own skills at the same time. And uh, this is just one of the examples I have is it, personally that I've kind of dove back in um, and I've been getting a lot of joy and excitement back in my own career by watching the excitement from other engineers and helping give them opportunities that maybe they haven't had before, give them challenges on a project, right? We've got junior engineers on the time and our team and identifying someone and say, hey, why don't you give this a try, right? Here's some guidelines. Here's some recommendations. Give this a go. Um, and that's just been hugely satisfying. So, so, so you you were you were a student, right? You you learned network engineering somehow, somewhere throughout your career, and now you're teaching it for the new generation. Has that technology changed, or and if it has, how did that change? You mean you mean the resources, the available to the learners yeah, beyond yeah. resources, the resources, the actual the actual tech itself, and what you're doing. Oh, okay, I got you. You know, all of it. I learned the fundamentals of networking in a very similar fashion to the students that I'm, I'm teaching today, which is I sat at a community college, right, taking fundamentals of networking and kind of working through Netacad programs and learning through those um, and then working my way towards that coveted CCNA certification, kind of the entry level certification into uh, networking. Um, so the, the general structure of how to do it hasn't changed a bunch, but man, a lot has really changed. Um, uh, we, if we look at some of the technologies that show up in the CCNA blueprint and then lessons that we learn, um, I remember I was teaching routing fundamentals, right? We teach the basics of routing in CCNA. It's always been there. Um, when I took CCNA, right, we taught RIP, right? The most basic of interior routing protocols because it was easy to understand. Um, but we also at the time when I, I remember even when I learned RIP, uh, it, we were generally told you learn this to understand the fundamentals of how routing works, but nobody really uses RIP in a real world. It just doesn't scale big enough. There's a lot of challenges with it. Um, today, I think we mention RIP in the program, but the routing protocol that we teach is OSPF, right? The, a single area OSPF, kind of a very a basic deployment. And that's a protocol that is very much used in the real world. We use it internally inside of our, our lab systems uh, and the data centers for all of our classes and learning and certification. So I like that we've kind of moved to educate on something that's more realistic and real world there. Though I will say I, I miss like RIP a little bit. Like when I first signed up to go teach the CCNA class, I was like, oh, I get to play with RIP again. But no, nope, it's gone. Um, and there's a lot of examples like that. Um, we obviously subnetting and binary conversion was was there when I learned it. Um, now, uh, next week, when I teach numbering systems in the program, we'll teach binary, but we also teach hexadecimal because IPv6 is now a big part 
of the CCNA program oh, right. and understanding IPv6 addresses. Um, and so there's a, there's a lot of things like that. Um, cloud computing, I mean, I'm aging myself a little bit, right? The internet existed, but the concept of cloud computing wasn't around when I took CCNA, but we, we introduced the concepts of cloud. Automation obviously wasn't there when I first started taking it. So from a topics perspective, that's one of the things that Cisco has done through the entire lifespan of our certification program is update the technologies that make sense and are relevant. Um, on the other side, right, when I learned networking, it was a book, right? That's That was the material we had is we, had, we were given a fundamentals of networking book. You open it, you read it. There was questions in there. You'd highlight in the book. Um, we do still have a, C or a NetACAD CCNA textbook, but it's optional on my syllabus because all of the, the learning, all of the material is all digital. It's e-learning now. And so most of the learning, the reading, the exercises have all gone to an online platform and they go through on there. So the, the idea of kind of collecting networking books and technology books has kind of gone to the wayside as most things have gone digital for materials that are out there. Um, so so many things have adjusted and it's been kind of exciting to have, have to be coming back and kind of seeing how that goes today and compare it to my memories from when I was a student in their seats. How do you how do you keep yourself from uh, teaching one thing and and not jumping right into the automation space for it? <laughs> That's where I would get a little itchy and be like, well, we we could do this in the command line, but if you wrote a little script, <laughs> no, it's 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 true, and I think that and, and we've Matt we've taught and Kareem we've talked about this before too. Um, one of the first things I tell anybody when I'm teaching an automation concept is you can't automate something that you don't understand, right? It's really hard. Right to automate anything if you don't know what's going on under the hood, um, unless you unless your job is just the automation and then you've got another person that's explaining like the pieces. And I've done pair programming like that, um, particularly with some, some complex areas where it's like I brought the network expertise and then somebody else brings the coding expertise and you jointly build something. Um, but when I'm at the CCNA level and we're, we're trying to talk through the fundamentals of how like just networking works and addressing and layer two and layer three, right? Adding in automation at that point would, would almost be, too, it's it's too soon. Though automation is a big part of the CCNA program. And I always look forward to the couple of weeks where we can spend kind of on introduction to automation. Um, I got really excited last, uh, last spring when I was teaching the final. So the CCNA NETACAD programs, three classes. Um, and so I was teaching the third class in the program, and the third one is where automation comes into the curriculum. And so we got to spend days, and I got to do kind of some of the things we, we've all enjoyed doing as part of our, our time at Cisco Live and events, right? Introduction to APIs, walking people through how to build a REST API. Um, I do get to talk about the automation pieces for the students, and those are exciting, Um but I also, man, I, I've, I've re relearned the enjoyment of teaching just how basic switching and routing works and going through things like the mailman and the mail analogy or the, the luggage analogies and explaining like how packets flow through an environment. And um, I've got to go grab an envelope and a piece of paper for my next lecture to kind of talk about encapsulation and addressing and just getting to those fundamentals has just been really enjoyable. And and you've given our snackers and our community a taste of that because I've seen a lot of your blogs around, you know, dissecting these these uh, concepts and explaining them. You've released a couple of uh, pretty fantastic U series, technically speaking, with Hank, which is touches on that on those concepts that we're talking about here. So you know, you've you've been kind of mentoring in person and virtually for a long time. And, and I'm sure a lot of our snackers look up to you, Hank. So I definitely appreciate all your efforts there. Oh, thank you, Kareem. And yeah, it's it was one of those kind of unexpected side benefits that came from kind of joining DevNet in some of the earlier days and really diving in and going through automation is where we started. Um, the idea that folks will will come and find me and thank me because I helped teach them some Python concept, right? It's I think that's what really invigorated that mentorship bone in my body right really showed the excitement that's there and i still just love it and i guess that's that's one of the messages i want to give to the snacker community um if you're like me and you're trying to figure out like you're interested in mentorship and how to go through and do it 
um, dive in. There's there's a whole other level of enjoyment and reward you can get from watching another engineer's eyes light up when they finally understand kind of how neighbor relationships matter in a routing protocol or when you kind of walk them through like why we have spanning tree and how the beautiful uh, kind of simplicity of building a nice like um, uh, unblocked loop in your network. Like you really, it, it's so enjoyable and there's so many opportunities. Um, if you want, if you're interested in the Netacad side, every Netacad uh, uh, academy I've ever talked to or instructor I've talked to, they're always looking for more professionals to come in and help. Maybe not teach an entire semester, right? That's not for everybody, but even just to come in and kind of talk with a class about what, what it means to be a network engineer, the different types of network engineering. Um, there's, there's a ton of value with that. You're, you're getting me excited to, you're getting me excited to sign up to mentor. Cause I remember I remember feeling so great after, you know, when we started the whole DevNet thing and we were teaching network engineer Python and automation and talking to them and being like, oh, my God, I can do this. And this look, look, can you help me with the script? And, you know, I was able to accomplish this in my day job. So like that, that feeling I, I really miss. So, um, yeah, it's totally getting, getting and, me all excited. And the pride that people have when they succeed in making it a practice, too. Um, the best conversations at events, Cisco Live, whatever, is when they'll come up to you and say, hey, I built this and let me tell you about it because they're so excited about what they've done. And whether you had a direct hand in it or a little bit of your or, or not at all, just knowing that programmatically we've been able to give them something, whether it be through DevNet, whether it be through Cisco U, whether it be through Netacad, um, you know, being part of that, even in a little bit of space is really exciting and to see to see those people, that joy, you, you said it, Hank, that joy that people have on their faces is, um, is so rewarding and all of that. So, um, you know, I love opportunities to mentor and, and being able to do that. I mean, I don't know people, if, um, if you get Kareem as a mentor, you know, take a little bit, what he says with a grain of salt. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's a genius. It's good advice. Um, but, good advice. uh, yeah, but it's, it is exciting. I'm getting a little tingle down my spine too, to, to maybe, uh, put a little more effort in than I have in the last few years. Um, so that, that's really exciting, Hank. Um, unfortunately, Hank, we, uh, we could probably talk about this yeah. for another hour and a half. Um, it's always great having you on the show, but unfortunately we are out of time. Um, but we'd love to have you back and talk about more cool stuff you're working on and see how that class went. And, and, uh, but, uh, snackers, we will, we will catch you next week. And thanks. Thanks again, Hank. Thanks, Hank. Thank yeah. you, snackers. And actually, Hank would love to have you back to just watch some of the curriculum that you, you cover in, uh, in your classes and just teach us something. <laughs> We'll just put videos up of him standing and caught in front of the classroom. Yeah. Should be a good time. All right. Thanks, everybody. And thanks again for having me, guys. Yeah, thank you.